So today we're looking at a code reader that's specifically made for your Apple or Android device. Is it the best on the market? Let's find out. Now, if this is all new to you, every vehicle 1996 and newer has a port. It's called OBD2. You take this dongle, you find the port, typically it's underneath the dash, plug it in, download the software, and we're ready to rock and roll. Now, I like to use a tablet as opposed to using a phone because it's easier for me to film and show you specifically what's going on. So what we're going to do is start the vehicle. I have the dongle plugged into the port and I'll show you, this thing is actually pretty incredible. Now, three things I want to quickly point out. Number one, no subscription fees. Number two, free lifetime updates. And number three, I read some reviews on Amazon. Some people thought it's a little slow. You have to remember, this is not just a scan tool. You can buy a scan tool for 25 bucks. This checks everything. This is 70 to 75% of a dealer scan tool. So this will check every module, almost every module. Now, because you may not see this screen too clearly, let's do a screen record and let's jump right into this. So there are a lot of things we can do here. Health report, I'll show you that in a moment. That will scan every module. You can jump to any system that you want. So these are the modules in this 20 year old vehicle. So the more modern your vehicle is, a scan tool really is not enough. You want something that checks all of the modules and then you have common functions. Look at all of these things you can do. I mean, this gets pretty wild. So let's start with the basic, just very, very basic stuff. And, you know, let's just do the health report. Now, this is the longest scan I came across. This takes just over three minutes. So let it run through its pace and I'll come right back. Okay, so roughly three and a half minutes and it's checked every module in this 20 year old vehicle. Now, if your check engine light is on, you'll find that under powertrain system. I don't have a fault code, but I'll show you an example of what it looks like. But let me just jump into this because this is where I want to show you how this is really dealer level. So if we had a fault code, you would just press read fault code. But let me jump over to actuation test. Engine output controls. Look at all of these things. Fan relays, this is pretty cool. Years ago, I did a video on how to test fan relays. In other words, your, your car's overheating and you're not sure if the fan is turning on the cooling fan. I went through this whole thing on how to remove them and test them. You can clearly just simply turn on the fan from your phone or your tablet. You press on and it kicks on the fan. How cool is that? And that checks all of the fuses, the relays, and it verifies if you have a problem with the cooling fan or maybe you have a different issue. But let me show you something that's pretty cool. Maybe you have a misfire. Your car's not running right. Maybe you have a P300 code and you wanna verify, see precisely what's going on here. So what you can do, hold on, let me go into fuel system cylinder power balance you can turn off specific injectors and see if the rpms dip now this is a v8 turning off one injector won't do that much but disable cylinder one and a little bit the rpms dip there you can you can hear hicking up a little bit and now i can enable it and there we go. If you have a four cylinder, this will really be pretty drastic. Huge time saver, absolutely huge time saver. Let me jump out of here. Let me show you what a code, look at this. Let me show you what a code looks like and how it can save you quite a bit of money. So let's get back out of here. Climate control. Now, maybe months ago i realized that i have a problem with the diverter in other words air is only coming out of these vents nowhere else so we can read the fault code as you can see it loads rather quickly 
B means body. So you may be familiar with P, which is powertrain. B is body, 0126. Now, a couple of things. You can take a report. You have a little explanation of what this means. Or you can just simply take a picture right from your device. But maybe you want more information. You press the question mark. It does a web search. I mean, just absolutely a massive, massive time saver. Now, what I'm going to do, we could be here for an hour. I don't want to take that time. I don't want to take your time. But let me show you the broad strokes on why I think many DIYers would want this. And even if you're, if you're not a DIYer, I'll explain on how this can still save you a lot of money. Let me jump out of this. Common functions, whoops, a little too fast. Oil light reset. Some modern vehicles, you have to go to the dealer to reset the oil light. Brake pad replacement, this is interesting. Years ago, I had an Audi S4, which had an electronic brake. And if you want to replace the rear brake pads, you have to tell the vehicle, hey, back off the brake so I can replace the brake pads. It releases the caliper ultimately. And I had to buy a specific scan tool to do that, which only had a one year subscription. This can do it with lifetime. Key programming. I show this on this vehicle and also on an FJ Cruiser. I went to the local locksmith and he wanted 150 bucks to program. This is a newer key fob. As you can see, I bought it off Amazon for I think like 11 bucks, but it had to be programmed. This can do it. And for 110 bucks, you can do all of these things versus paying, again, the locksmith, which wanted $150. Now, this is also pretty cool. Let me jump out of this. Again, I'm still learning the software because there's so many things to do. Actually, I did not want to do that. Let me jump into maintenance functions. I want to jump back into that and show you one more thing and we'll wrap it up. But steering angle reset. When I first obtained my Acura TL, that belonged to a very good friend of mine. Unfortunately, he hydroplaned. And when the vehicle struck the curb, it cracked the subframe. Now, when I obtained the vehicle, the steering wheel was no longer true. It was off by 45 degrees just to go down the road straight. So I had to recalibrate the steering angle. And I bought a Foxwell scanner. I paid 160 bucks for it and I used it just one time. This can do a, a steering angle reset. Battery matching, again, going back to the Audi S4, if you have a Mercedes-Benz, some BMWs, you can't just replace the battery because you may damage the alternator and the brand new battery. So when you swap out the battery, you have to tell the vehicle's computer, hey, there's a brand new battery installed and it updates the system. So again, this is where you start to see all of the functionality you can do with this. Now, let me jump back into, again, it takes a little bit to spool up. Let me jump back into this, and I wanna share with you one more functionality, which is known as bi-directional control, very similar to the misfire test. And then I'll give you what I think are the cons, and we'll wrap it up. So now we're back at the main menu, system selection. Let's say, for example, you're having an issue with your passenger side window. Is it a fuse problem, relay problem? Is there a problem with the control panel? Let's command that window to go down and back up. So again, look at all of these things you can do. Passenger door module, actuation test, output control, door window test, and window up and down. And let's press down and see what is what down there we go so now we verify the motor works the fuses are good the relay is good if it's not working for you then it's more than likely just the control panel so this saves you a lot of time that's the whole point here so clearly pretty awesome to have but what are the drawbacks three things i want to point out here two drawbacks one, I think, is an advantage, even if you're not a wrencher. But the biggest drawback for me, I'm old school. If you're from a younger generation, this may not bother you. But when you download the app and you first open it, it wants precise location. Now, I have a VPN on the iPad. The VPN did not work. 
I don't know if you could do this with Android, but on Apple, you can zoom out out of, out of precise location. So in other words, maybe it zooms out to 20 square miles instead of precise location. But why do you need that to use the software? And this is, King Bolin is not the only one. I've used iCarly and others. They want precise location. Why? Why does that matter? But that's just the way it is. Secondly, like I said, some people uh, may be impatient. They think it takes a little too long for this to load. The longest scan is the health scan. That takes almost three and a half minutes. But something that Scotty Kilmer did point out, he did a review on this as well. If you want instantaneous results, you're paying four to $5,000 for a professional scan tool. I can wait three and a half minutes for 110 bucks. I have no problem with that. And then thirdly, what if you're not a wrencher? You don't have the tools, don't have the experience, you just don't have no interest, whatever the case may be. But maybe you don't trust your dealership or local mechanic. Well, you can pick up this, scan your vehicle, you know precisely what's going on. The next time you go to the mechanic, maybe they're ripping you off and now you have proof. You can bring your vehicle elsewhere. So that's golden, that is absolutely huge. And maybe, just maybe, you don't want to run to AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts or wherever to check the engine code. Maybe your time is very, very valuable and you can only do it at 11 o'clock at night. Now you can. So I think it's well worth it. I'll link it below if you want to read more about it. As always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.